What's up, everybody? Is make it make sense? I had to pull out the Patron for this because um, this reunion was a mess. <laughs> like the video as the intro play because we got a lot to get into. And y'all know we don't have a lot of time. Could somebody please make it make sense? Make it make sense to me in Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Make sense. Make it make sense. You know what was up. Look at me. What did I say? No. Come here. Look at me. Hey. Look at me. What? I no. <laughs> Somebody said, where did I go? I just went out of town. One of my friends had like a field day event. Uh, shout out Josh to Josh. And I wasn't invited. So I popped in. I showed up uninvited. And then I wrecked shop. So... <laughs> Yeah, you know, sometimes this stuff gets kind of dark and, you know, you just kind of like have to take a minute. But uh, I'm back. I made sure to watch this reunion right before I did this review because um, mm, Giselle is one miserable lady. This was her face through most of the reunion. I didn't edit it, nothing. That was Giselle's face through most of the reunion. And Candace in these tears. Yes, I crashed the party and I would do it again. Like Robin's field day? No. This person actually rented out a park. <laughs> Robin just threw some burlap sacks and disinvited children, but we supposed to care about your children. All right. We are supposed to care about your children, but you're disinviting other cast members' children places. Just saying. Just saying. Um, <laughs> these ladies are a trip. Everything that they said that Candace and Wendy did throughout the season with like the little side conversations is exactly what they did throughout this whole reunion. But, okay, but anyway, let's let's get started. Mia, we have to hear again that. This man is questioning the paternity of Mia's son, Jeremiah. Ink thinks that Jeremiah is his. I can't. I have echoed exactly what Karen has said. This kid is going to see this. Throwing this out there for reality TV feels dirty. I know that Mia, you know, considers herself to be very open. But Mia, sometimes... Close it. Close the mouth. <laughs> Close the legs. You're straddling this boy you have, or man, you have two young children. Close your mouth about the kids and close your legs on camera. You are no longer an exotic dancer. I understand that, you know, you're on a reality TV show. I understand how the media works, but you're interesting enough now. You don't have to do that. You are not an exotic dancer. You are a mother of three who's knocking on 40's door if you're not 40 already. You don't have to do that. You, yeah, Mia is too transparent. <clears throat> yeah, um, but okay. Uh, Karen echoed my sentiment. Mia and Gordon are not protecting their children with this particular storyline, and I don't like it. We hear that Inc. is a radio personality in 20 markets. So clearly between Mia's salary now and Ink's salary, they're probably going to be doing well. I get so tired of hearing people say, I'm in a penthouse. To any other normal person in the world, an 1,100 square foot domicile 
on the top floor is a condo. It sounds so pretentious to go around saying, I'm in a penthouse, I'm in a penthouse, I'm in a penthouse. Because to the average person, it gives sprawling, like four or 5,000 square feet, multi-level um, domicile on the top floor. You have a condo, and it's probably in a nice building. We're in a penthouse. We're in a penthouse. We're in a penthouse. Mia says she's very transparent. I'm going to leave that alone. Let it go, Elsa. I am so tired of hearing you say something about ink being a mistress, the storyline, the legs open, the mouth open. It's too much. It's too much, and half of it we really don't even care about. Just my opinion. Uh, and, Cody, if you're still in here, I got to call you. I miss you, friend. Um, uh, we move right into Giselle talking about Gordon. Here's my issue. Now, I know we have Giselle fans. That's why it was very important for me to have um, Gabor up here to kind of, like, even it out. Because I'm not a fan of Giselle in any way, shape, or form. I try to see everybody's side, but I, I'm not a fan of Giselle. She uses another buzzword to describe somebody's husband. So in that scene, Gordon was very angry. If you don't shut the... Don't ask anybody else shit. How about that? Don't ask anybody else's husband anything involving a buzzword because that stuff sticks with you. Gordon has a wife who has been cheating on him. He has every right to be angry because normal humans show emotion. Giselle, you are stoic and emotionless. So saying, oh, he was so angry. He has a right to be angry. He didn't hit the woman. He didn't scream at the woman. He was just short with her in a conversation. That is not abuse. And using a buzzword like that, just like you use buzzwords of sneaky link and you use buzzwords for all of these other husbands, other these, all of these other women who actually have husbands to speak of. And it's not right. I'm sorry. How do you, they would hate me on reality TV the same way they hated me at this field day. My mouth is slick. <laughs> I would have been lighting her ass up. Another buzzword, Giselle? Got any buzzwords for Andy's special friend? <laughs> uh, yeah. Somebody said, uh, Lala says, I live by myself in a 650 square foot apartment. 1,100 square feet for a mom and three kids is okay, but it ain't no penthouse. It, it Doesn't it come across as a little pretentious? I'm in a penthouse. Even Andy was like, well, how big is it? If Andy's questioning how big it is, it's because the general consensus is that you're living in a sprawling um, top floor home. And that's just not the case. I see why you weren't invited. <laughs> I'm the party. No, I'm a good time. And I always bring the host a bottle. <laughs> I'm a good time. Ask anybody whose parties or house I've been to. Um, I went to another friend's house and I brought a whole bunch of chicken. I'm bringing liquor and chicken. What could go? <laughs> what could go wrong with that? Um, if you ain't buying it, does your matter? If you ain't buying it, does your matter? I don't know what that means. Um, let me know what you mean by that, blues. Um, okay, so we get Giselle asking if this man is angry. Mia answered freely, but Robin chimes in and says it has to do with the age. Why are Robin and Mia tag teaming? Neither one of you have a man behind you. Mia has more men in, in and out than you two ever have to defend you. Her ex-husband is up here defending her. I, you know, like, <laughs> somebody said you bring, <laughs> I, you know, one of my friends uh, always, there's always a lot, a ton of people at his house. So I was just like, okay, if I go, I can't, I can't be Kenya 
and bring a, one crab cake for myself. So I um <laughs> so you know you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Don't show up to people's house where you know people are gonna be at without any food. Don't show up to my house with food just for yourself. Um so Mia, I feel, is very comfortable expressing what's going on in her life. It's very strange to have Robin and Giselle narrating questions that Andy's not even asking. I think the difference between Robin and Giselle doing it and, say, NECA asking Giselle questions is because NECA is new. The questions were on point, And NECA is not evasive about her own business, like Robin and Giselle. For Robin and Giselle to consistently be grilling these people feels hypocritical. <laughs> Robin should have been as quiet as a as a damn mouse. I'm, I know you didn't say church mouse because she doesn't go there. Um, but again, once agree, Mia disagrees with her and was like, it doesn't have anything to do with his age. I feel like they should let people finish their package before tacking on questions for Andy. You're not producing this show, and the one show that you do produce is not getting hundreds of millions of views, i.e. your podcast. So maybe let Andy produce the show with the producers and not you. <laughs> like, what is that? Uh, Denisha, thanks for becoming a member. And Amanda says she also mentioned something about the same son having a learning disability. Yeah, I do remember that. I think she kind of insinuated that he might be like a little slow or something. Either way it goes, it's not fair to these children. Now the world knows that you were their mistress. Now the world knows that you conceived two children and stole them from somebody else. Now the world knows that he might have some learning disability. Now the world knows that you were cheating on his daddy and might have conceived him with somebody else, even though you had an IUD. I, look, it's too much. It is D-class in the show. <laughs> it's, I don't know what this is. Um, she says that he's abusive because he was waking her up at 4 a.m. and emptying her accounts. Abuse does come in many forms. So maybe that could be considered abuse. Is abuse also like cheating on your husband? Because she said on the 70th birthday, he said you could do it, but... It sounds like she was cheating on him way back before she conceived the child. So how old is Gordon? Let's see. What's Gordon's last name? Is Mia's husband Gordon. Okay, y'all. Okay. Y'all, I want you to see this. Because we just, we just discovered this whole timeline is bullshit. Financial abuse. Okay. Oh, I have something planned. Hold on, let me see. Hold on one second. Thank you. I had tuned that other TV out. I appreciate that. Um. Okay, so he's 71. So he said that he gave her permission to get another man at 71 because that's when it stopped working so if that's the case then why the hell is she over here saying she was cheating on him when jeremiah was conceived right he said he gave permission on the 70th birthday you were cheating from the time he was conceived but again i really don't give a damn about gordon's feelings here because you were cheating on your wife with mia None of these people are innocent except for the kids who are getting drugged through the fucking mud. I don't like that. I was with Karen. I wasn't with Karen with these faces she was making, though. Is it that one? No, it, it was this one. Karen can't control these new lips. Karen got her lips plumped, and now she can't control them. And she has gone back to Karen from yesteryear. She came back to this Karen. She can't control her, her lips anymore. So, you know, lip fillers aren't for everybody. She looks great for a 60-year-old woman. But, you know, 
maybe don't get so much work done all the time. I know it has to be hard to be on television, but you can't get, like, I don't know what that is. Obi, thank you so much for uh, the 10 memberships. Obi is our resident doctor, y'all. <laughs> I don't know why she overplumped them. A lot of the a lot of the people on these shows go to the doctor right before, and you have to give time stuff to settle. So it'd be better if they did it towards the end of the season than going right before the season starts. I like the way Chris handled Giselle. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. We're definitely gonna get to that. I don't know. Karen's was Karen a little buzzed at this reunion. You like the new lips, pretty girl, pretty but pretty black girl. I just think she overplumped. I just think she overplumped. But maybe they just haven't like settled yet. Maybe they'll settle. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, we just solved the mystery. Gordon is upset because that little boy has to be what, like seven? So you were cheating on him when the little boy was seven, but he gave you permission to cheat last year. Um, Bonnie says she likes the new lips. Okay. <laughs> Somebody says she's full on drunk. <laughs> I love Karen. Karen is my girl. But this next season is going to start with Karen definitely talking about that accident. Okay, but let's get back. <sighs> um. So Giselle offers her some good advice. Always have your own bank account. But I was trying to remember, when we met Giselle, does she have a job? Have we ever known Giselle to work? I know she was first lady. I know she did like some interning or something in the White House, probably in the 90s. But has she ever worked, y'all? And I'm, I'm not trying to even be shady to her. You were living on the outskirts of Potomac. You were driving that Gucci car. No noticeable fashion or taste. I don't know if I'm going to take Giselle's advice. Every he was her first job? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Okay. But always asking about somebody else's businesses as if you have the most business acumen. Always asking, Karen, where you at on this stage of discovery? Karen, what are you doing here? Uh, Ashley, what's going on with your restaurant? And your stuff lasted, what, like a year before it was liquidated? Just one, like, ugh. okay. Um, Mia says she had more money before Gordon through an inheritance. And I know everybody was saying in the comments, like, but her, her mom was a crack addict. Where did she get the money from? Mia alleges that three of her grandparents died in the same year, and she was able to get her hands on the money. To say you inherited something means that the money was yours. When you say something like, I got my hands on the money, to me, it gives the inclination that it wasn't will to you. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what that was. Either you inherited money because they were smart enough to have some form of um, insurance or you got your hands on the money. I don't know what to believe because we we found out that you and Gordon were getting your hands on the money of the, you know, they were alleging that you were misappropriating funds in the business. And now you're saying Gordon was really broke. But when we met you, he was saying he was going to get you a G-Wagon. You remember when he was talking to Karen? Oh, girl, you look so good. Ah, I'm going to get you a G-Wagon, Mia, because I'm, I'm G. Okay. <laughs> so I don't even know. Gordon was okay. You said that Gordon had no real money. It was all a front. But you also told us that when you were escorting, he was giving you $10,000 an hour. I like, I don't know, Mia. You just be, you sometimes Mia just be saying shit. 
which <laughs> is uh, Mia's packages are always going to be confusing. Um, she points out that Candace and Wendy did not call her when she was getting a divorce. If you physically touch me, you should just be glad I filmed scenes with you. Like, if you put your hands on me, we're going to be forever, like Cardi B would say, forever. So what would you think that Wendy would be calling you for? You and Candace don't technically really get along. They tolerate you just like you tolerate them, but you don't like them. And if you over here busting it wide open in the backseat of a car with ink, Clearly, you're not distraught. So if I don't really like you and you're not distraught, what am I calling you for? So that you can lie on the phone? Mm -mm. I was low-key thinking. Mia is the truthful version of Marlo. Let that sink in. Mia is the more truthful version of Marlo Hampton. I almost would have preferred that Marlo would have gave us some of the stuff that Mia gave us because Marlo came on talking so much about I was with a billionaire. I was with a billionaire. I was with a billionaire. You was with a millionaire. I was with a billionaire. So you were Carisha. What did 50 Cent say to Carisha? You little sex worker, you. Like, that's... <laughs> I don't, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, so Wendy's excuse for not calling was when Gordon came to me with all of this tea about you, I didn't spill it. Okay. Wendy, I, I was happy with girl, you hit me. So once you hit me, I don't see it for you. I don't we can film this show together. I might, I might, I don't know what that was. I don't know if she gave her a coochie coupon or what. I don't know why you would flash this woman who you know is openly bisexual and, you know, is known to put her tongue places um, with married people. Why would you even flirt with that? So I was actually low-key with Robin when she was like, y'all were bumping vaginas last year. It didn't make sense to me either, but I don't. I didn't like that Robin said it. Shut up, Robin. You over here sharing hotel with Giselle. Y'all are making Bravo checks, but you're going to Andy's baby shower and having to share a room. But I guess it's on. It's it's on par for Potomac because they serve the the girls sandwiches from Seven Eleven and hot dogs and wieners at their events, and the girls get like bottom basement airbnbs for their group trips so i was surprised they went to casa de campo when i was there last year i never would have thought that giselle and them would have been there surprisingly giselle and them were there around the same time that i was there and then giselle and them were in austin texas around the same time that i was there i would not want to run into any of these people I would not want to run into any of these people. I ran into um, Shawnee O'Neal and her children shopping recently. Um, I walked straight out the store. <laughs> straight out the store. Um, okay. So Candace says she felt uncomfortable and she just didn't want to be in it. She said, even Karen called because she's not that heartless. You just, don't, I don't like you and you don't like me. I, that's just it. And you just leave it at that. Period. Uh, right, Nikki. She says, for somebody who doesn't like Candace, Robin sure has a lot of questions for her and her husband. I don't like you. I wouldn't want to know a goddamn thing about you. Exactly. Exactly. I've gotten better with Shawnee. Like I was calling her nostrils O'Neal for a while. I don't do that anymore. I had to talk about her sugar baby, but you know, that's just my job. I, I'm I'm a lot nicer. 
I'm <laughs> a lot nicer. Uh, but I still didn't want to be in her presence. Um, we actually have a mutual friend. So whenever I have to talk about Shawnee, I'm like, please don't like watch this show. <laughs> please don't watch this particular show. Um, I just, they were in there and they were doing this. Giselle, they were bumping vaginas. I, Giselle and Robin were doing the exact same thing that Candace and Wendy do. When they are in these people's presence, they shoo, shoo, shoo. They make funny faces. They really don't like each other. It's not fun to watch, to be honest with you. Um. So then we move on to Giselle's fake relationship. I'm not getting into that. I don't care. He doesn't. He wants a young white woman. That's not Giselle. He got a young white woman pregnant on one of the shows he was with. He likes young blonde women. Nobody believes that this relationship is real. Then we get into a package about Giselle's father dying, and we actually get to see Giselle be emotional. Um, it's important to say that he did a lot for the black community. So, I, you know, I'm not going to really go in on him. I mean, I'm not going to go in on her with this. You know, when your parent dies... It's hard for anybody. So, you know, those emotions that we saw from Giselle were, were, were real and true. And it, they're few and far between for what she shows on this show. Um, So they do this emotional package about the dad. And before she can answer anything about the father, she wants to go directly into Wendy's a bold faced lie. Like Giselle was on one this entire reunion. And so Wendy was basically like, you called my mom evil while she was in the hospital. I didn't know she was in the hospital. The point is, did you call my mother evil? You did. So when you call my mama evil, I'm going to look at your child any kind of way. I really don't care about your relationship with your child. I'm going to make faces. I'm going to do all that because I don't give a damn about you. Just like you don't give a damn about me. You were expecting me to put your children on the level that you don't put my mom. I don't care what the hell my mom did to another cast member. If you call her evil, I'm coming after you. Every chance I get. I, I really would not care about your damn children. Sorry. We're going to be forever. But Giselle didn't let up on that. Um, And even Andy was like, well, he got what Wendy was saying. Giselle is still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Queen B. Moore says, I'm out. I'm over this. In the hospital or out? You kidding? <laughs> right. Uh, they didn't talk about her children. I, I think that Giselle wants that narrative to be out there because she wants them gone at all costs. First, it was Candace. I guarantee you next year it's going to be Wendy. If Wendy even gets a, her gets a letter to come back. Um, blah, blah, blah. Candace starts crying for Giselle's dad. I think Candace is just an emotional person, but she wouldn't cry for you. She wouldn't. I, I I don't show that kind of emotion so freely. Candace cries a lot. I, you know, I, I don't even know how to. Giselle did not give a damn that she was crying for her. Um, I think Ashley cried and Karen cried as well, but nobody talked about them crying for her. So Andy tried to blame Karen for not going in on Wendy and Candace for making the faces. And Karen did exactly what she's supposed to do. I'm not in charge of them. They're going to do exactly what they want to do. And then Giselle goes in on her. Don't do that, Karen. Don't do that. I wanted Karen to shut her down. I really wanted Karen to shut her down. Um, and then 
Candace says, I regretted it greatly. And Karen is doing the head shake. That Giselle would try to weaponize her children again. I fell out my bed when I saw that. I was so happy that she did not apologize again. Um, I put Jason does not want this woman. He is with a white woman. Uh, so then we find out that Giselle has been laying it low and spreading it wide with some another athlete because we saw how well Sherman worked out. Um, Sassy Girl says, Mims, I need you to take a shot or two of Casamigos. <laughs> this is Potomac. I mean, this is um, this is Patron. Patron Resposado. <clears throat> so, <laughs> but thank you for the super chat. And James says, Karen's face when she thought Candace was apologizing to Giselle. Giselle. Aw, hell no, nah, Grandma. <laughs> I, I'm with you, James. She was pissed. I mean, she was surprised that it went in that direction. But I think Karen had, had a few drinks. I think Karen had, had a few drinks. She was feeling herself because she was back to sitting in the first seat. But it was a whole bunch of these faces she was making. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Mia has alleged that Giselle is with an athlete. And Giselle is noticeably uncomfortable they're having this conversation andy does not press why are you not pressing for giselle's truth to come out that's why i feel like there's favoritism on the show anybody else you know kenya got married giselle has been doing all these things off camera for years but she's the darling of potomac so they let her do it um let's see so Ashley was pretty much a waste of space. She'd been rubbing Michael's feet. That's the most impactful thing that she said. They asked her about the lawsuit and it's, I don't know. You know good and goddamn well about that lawsuit. Uh, we move on because, again, Ashley's inconsequential. Candace, come closer to the camera. I mean, just put your ear to the microphone. During the season... The woman told you the relationship is dead. Why are you chasing another grown ass woman for friendship? You have a lot of friends, you have family, you have more than her and a husband that loves you and wants to be with you. Why is Robin's friendship affecting you so greatly? You came into the show knowing that Robin was up Giselle's bush, like Karen said. Why is it so impactful to be her friend? Why are you having palpitations, as, <laughs> as the old people might say, over this woman? I, I, it actually angers me, to be honest with you. It actually angers me to see you damn near grovel for Robin's friendship of all people i didn't like it she then told you it's dead the friendship is dead um and then it, they ask her about the drusador beef she says that they do business different you did shade the girl but i guess it doesn't matter because she's not on the show anymore to respond um i didn't quite know what that meant i do know that they share a songwriter um i think naya writes for both of them so maybe the most i could think of is maybe Drew wanted a song that Candace had or something like that, and Candace didn't like it. Uh, yeah, do what Douglas said. We need more likes. We got like over 1,400 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. Um, I'm doing this review because y'all told me that I need to have my Bravo content back. So I'm going to be integrating some Bravo content, the stuff that I can stomach. Because I was not about to watch an episode of, of Chicken Shit Bingo. There's so much more to Austin than that. But, you know, Ashley giving a trip would be chicken shit. Um, I just put in here, why is Ashley there? Um, the colorism conversation. Robin says that the colorism conversation was extremely uncomfortable for her. And if I had not seen seasons one and two, I would be inclined to believe her. But... You and Giselle were fine with the audience believing that Ashley and um, Katie didn't want to be 
back. I mean, didn't want to be black. You were absolutely fine with the world thinking that these two women of mixed race heritage did not want to be black. But now that the question is posed towards you, you don't want to have the conversation. Yeah, Katie, Katie definitely did clear her. Katie definitely did clear Robin. Um, and Giselle. Because when Giselle told Katie, you sitting over there with that Jackson 5 afro, and Katie's like, this is coming from a woman with processed hair. You know, big sister Giselle. So that's why I can't cut them uh, any slack on this conversation. You wanted a race conversation until you started looking stupid. Then all of a sudden, you don't want to have it. It's uncomfortable for me. You know who says that? People of another race when they're called racist. It would have been just as simple as to say, I know that colorism still exists. Um, I've not had your experience. But, you know, I know it exists. Done. Just to not say anything is crazy. I mean, I'm not even going to go there. Um, Candace starts um, apologizing again, and they go over some of her tweets. And she's like, what you guys don't understand was these messages. Why are you begging Rob the Builder for friendship? You're you're not actually friends. You're coworkers. She's actually friends with Giselle. This right here tells me she really is not interested in being your friend, lady. Why do you want it so badly? So this whole thing of what the audience doesn't know, okay, we know it now, and it didn't shift the narrative at, at all. Robin is upset with you, more upset with her husband, more upset with you than her husband who was cheating on her for tweeting about stuff, period. That's friendship ending for her. Done. You're done. Don't cry. Don't apologize anymore. Let it go. Karen says that this is the best group to talk about colorism. Where? I was with Wendy. I don't think that they have the range for it. And I also, I think Ashley might be more comfortable talking about it. I don't see Karen, Giselle, or Robin talking about it. I don't think that every situation is colorism, though, just to be honest with you. I don't think every situation is colorism. But I think if they were actually able to have, I think Bravo should have done a special involving all of their black housewives across all franchises speaking on it. I think that would have been educational. I think it would have been a good conversation to have because I believe colorism exists. Um, and even if the person is not of a darker complexion, I think that conversations between people of all skin tones should be had. I, I just don't, I don't think shutting it down, shutting the conversation down was almost like an admission of guilt. Um, on Bravo, never. I just think it would have been a good idea to have it. Um, the colorism conversation basically destroyed basketball lives for a few seasons. Oh, no, I'm not tipsy. I've only had uh, one drink, and I'm not even done with it, and it was just one shot in there. Are you saying I'm tipsy because you think that the colorism conversation could never be had on Bravo? <laughs> um, Pretty Black Girl says, Katie didn't give a fuck. She kept her foot on both their necks. I'd love to see her back, but only if she came back with that same energy. Katie is... Katie is facing some challenges. I follow Katie, and the other day she was talking about Russell Simmons is innocent. I don't think that she's in a place to be on television. Um, mostly she just talks about this guy that she's dating. Um, I think I remember her saying once she was able to visit her kids, K 
Katie is facing some challenges, but she was definitely like one of my faves on the show. Um, we don't need another <laughs> green eye bandit pick me. <laughs> AJ30 says, I just wanted Candy or Wendy to bring up the James Harden watermelon and chicken in the beer comments as an example of Jizzy's and Rob's colorism. So I wasn't going to bring this up, but the conversation has been had multiple times about Giselle's father um who was running against barbara jordan and lost for a, a seat on in the texas parliament and he called her aunt jemima so when you have a very fair-skinned man who marries a very fair-skinned woman and produces very fair-skinned children who could pass the paper bag test and you get mad at a woman and you call her Aunt Jemima. I think that shows some, you know, inherent colorism. And if that's the kind of conversations your dad's having, what else could have been going on in the house? Just a thought. I get the correlation to calling her an Uncle Tom, but there's also a image yeah I don't know why they mute. I understand Karen. It's it's Candace. It's not that she's dumb. She genuinely believes the best in people, even when they do her wrong. She doesn't have streetwise discernment. The lawsuit was the price of Ashley's house. <laughs> That's a good observation, S. No, the sound had gone out. I don't know why. Sorry. Somebody else brought this up. Could could that have been the reason that her father didn't like Jamal because he is of a darker skin? It's possible. Um, it's also possible that he didn't like Jamal because allegedly Jamal was doing what he was doing his wife, cheating. Who knows? But I, I even with all that being said, he definitely he definitely was a civil rights activist. Um, but you know, these things are, are brought into question. Whereas face, I don't know. Cause face was telling me she was tired of all the other stuff and I needed to do Bravo stuff. And now I do this video and she's not here. <laughs> um, okay. Again, Candace starts crying and apologizes. The new girl and her husband are bickering backstage a lot. I, you know, I don't really think that NECA moves the meter in, in any one direction, to be honest with you. If Mia and, I mean, if NECA and Wendy come back, I would hope that whatever this was this season, they could squash because Wendy's going to need more than just Karen in her corner. Um, Kayla says the civil rights movement isn't squeaky clean either. Not NECA hates her husband. <laughs> uh, do I see a pattern with what, um, Obi? Oh, y'all not feeling NECA either. Um, okay, so we get more conversation about Mia being Gordon's mistress and how she basically was insinuating that when Ray was going on golf trips, Ray was cheating with a version of her. I thought that was kind of lame. Um if Ray would have came back at her and called her like a hoe or something, you know, like Ray is way too classy for this, but you're basically insinuating that he was cheating on his wife in DR. Um, and Mia is very proud to have been Gordon's mistress. Like she wears this scarlet letter with a badge of honor. Yeah, I was the other woman. Yeah, I was sleeping with this married man. Yeah, I took him from his wife. Yeah, I cheated on him. Yeah. Um, both men that I was sleeping with at the same time think that one of my kids, like it, it's too much Mia. 
It's too much. Um, Ali says, if you get a chance, the clip of actor Jesse Williams speaking on colorism, he explained how the how crazy the reverse colorism crowd looks when confronted on colorism. I'll check that out. You have to have conversations about these things to to. You kind of have to be informed on this. If you don't know that you have an inherent bias, and you'll never find out if you don't actually like. I think that they need to be willing to have these conversations. Everybody is so concerned with looking bad or saying something stupid that it really acts as a block to having fruitful, intelligent dialogue with one another. Um everybody every husband is there. Every husband is there except wine. So Andy's trying to be messy to get the other husbands to say that wine ain't shit for not showing up, and none of them took the bait. Robin starts going in on Chris's mistress. Y'all, we got over 1500 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. Let's see if we can get to a thousand likes. That'd be appreciated. It's a free way to support the channel. You cannot quiz Chris about his alleged mistress when you believe all of Juan's story about his. You, it, This is what makes you look stupid, Robin. You look dumb being so concerned about what's going on in between Chris's legs. You are very, very concerned with it. Considering we don't know whose legs your husband is in between. I just don't feel like it's yours. I I, I don't like, this is pathetic. You going play by play with Chris on what he allegedly sent and Chris was shutting you down. Nope, didn't happen. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And Rob, what about this? What about your limp D? Robin, you're swallowing and still can't keep one at home. Let that sink in. That's the ultimate slap in the face. He doesn't have a job. You're paying most of the bills. You then lost most of the money. He's already told you he's only staying for the kids. And you are very worried about what Chris allegedly did. The woman made these claims. Then she took them back. Then Robin was like, well, then she made them again. So when Candace says that you know, she doesn't know that Giselle and Robin were a part of this, but she's very distrusting of Giselle in general. And then Giselle's like, but the woman said, don't blame me. Well, the woman also said that Chris did it, that she didn't do it. The woman was clearly slow and looking for attention. So how is it? She's telling the truth about Giselle, but she's not telling the truth when she retracted about Chris. This is your problem, Giselle. Focus on whomever's bed that you're in because you're not doing it in the West Wing. The only reason that that, well, the one thing that Giselle is is a good mom. She's not going to have all these men around her children. She has that boy around the children because the girls know that that ain't her real man. It's not her real man. So that's why she can have Jason around them. She had Sherman around him because Sherman had money. And she thought that this was going to be her golden ticket. She thought she was going to actually be able to stop wearing designer imposter clothes. And you got Gordon embarrassed on the show. And that's when you went straight evil. I think that they know that Jason is nothing more than a city girl, a city boy. A paid actor who Giselle violated when she touched his butt. That's about it. <laughs> um, that's about it. 
Oh, uh, for the members, remind me on the next members only live to tell you a Candace story, a behind the scenes Candace story. Um, so then Chris cleared Giselle because Giselle was doing her huffing and puff and, you know, everything was just shaking on her. She was upset and she was mad. And Chris was like, Candace is allowed to feel how you, how she's allowed to feel. Giselle, you are allowed to feel and have emotions about what happened two years ago. Fantastic. Next question. And he shut her up. And to me, that's where it ended. <laughs> that's where it ended. Um, Let me see where we at. Um, Kelly says, Juan resents her for losing his money, and now he's making her pay for it. You think he made her pay for that Canada woman's hotel bill? <laughs> that would be so messed up if he was taking money out of Robin's account to pay for that woman's hotel bill. Be Blessed says, did you see Robin look at Giselle first, give a nasty smirk, then question Chris on if he ever met the liar? It's given Robin's part of the plot. Definitely. Robin is part of the issue. I don't know how Candace didn't see it from the beginning. If they were going to plot on Monique, why wouldn't they plot on you? She got too comfortable with them mean women. Um, too Adorable says, wouldn't surprise me next season we find out Neca's marriage is a sham and her husband is cheating. Oh, wow. <laughs> now her husband is cheating on her. <laughs> um, Shaquilla said, oh, thank you for the super sticker. Um, let's see. I think before Chris came out, he asked her not to speak and let him do the talking because she would have gone off on both of them. They might, Candace was really allowing Chris to have his moment and that's not normal. <laughs> uh, Timeless says, Robin was acting like she saw Chris's, you know, you know Robin is not interested in seeing anybody's eggplant. This is not in her repertoire. Um, remember when the twins told Giselle she's nicer when Sherman is around? That's why those girls can't wait to hit the road. <laughs> you say we're going across the country. We're going across the country. Oh, uh, Lady Lex says one's one adding fabric softener to another hole. Oh. One adding fabric softener to another bitch laundry. <laughs> uh, oh, no, Hillary. She says, are we sure that NECA is a real woman? Yes, she's a real woman. I think she fights with him because too much testosterone. <laughs> no, she's no real woman. Uh, James Potts says, I would have had a cake with 18 candles symbolizing Robin's single life once the boys turned. Oh, no. <laughs> Y'all are... Y'all... <laughs> Y'all are going in on Robin. I would have had a cake with 18 candles symbolizing Robin's single life once them boys turn 18. Make a wish, shoulder. <laughs> uh, B Plus says 1,500 in the chat and still 700 likes. Hit that like button. Yes, please do what B Plus said. Y'all, so I'm going to be mixing in my Bravo content. Um, um, Ali says, I think, I think Ike is cheating on NECA. What married doctor travels within the U.S. for work? That man doesn't want to be home. Damn. So nobody likes NECA, not even her husband. They do bicker a lot. They do bicker a lot. Oh, but yeah, I'll be mixing it up, guys. Uh, like, I have more Diddy stories. I have more updates on some of the other stuff that's going on. Um, like I said, I just had to take the weekend off. Am I doing a panel with Gabor today? No, uh, the panels are going to be sporadic. I literally had to ask my friends to come on because I really wasn't that excited about the season. The reunion to me is better than the season, but I was getting really frustrated and having two sides was not fun to watch. So I really, I would watch some episodes, but why am I, I don't want to talk about chicken shit bingo. Okay. Jamila says she loves NECA. Okay, I think every, I, that's what an ensemble cast is. Everybody is not gonna like everybody, but it is good to know that NECA does have some. Um, NECA does have some people. Maybe I'll try to put the panel together for the part three of the reunion. I'll see if they want to do it. But um, um, 
just just as plenty of married doctors travel for work they're called lucum tenens and they make big money um i know a lot of traveling nurses as well um <laughs> now she has one fan how do i become a member um in the description of each video is a link to the membership um Ike is part owner of a nightclub and with a F boy aura. <laughs> He's definitely up to something. <laughs> uh, and Two Adorable says the Green Eyed Man is it the most, but where's their husband? Nobody's claiming them. Like Wendy said, you're going to show up with your suitcases. Y'all, I got to go. Thank you guys for being here. I will be back tomorrow with more hot topics. Uh, and I'll be researching a few court cases. So, Y'all have a good night. See you later. Um, and I will try to put that panel together for the last week. And maybe we'll include Scotty, Scotty by Nature TV too. Y'all have a good night though. <laughs>